just to you we face some good offenses this year, how how good are they and maybe what uh, you know what concerns you most about staff or the way they run their offense? Yeah, I mean they're as good as anybody we played. Um Great receivers. Obviously, the tight ends made some plays for him. Stafford's done it a long time. Um, really coming into his own right now, making a lot of plays for him, throwing the ball down the field, Cup, um, Woods, all those guys. So they're talented. It's going to be a big challenge for us. Um, just got to be able to hopefully contain them a little bit and slow them down and see what we can do to slow them down. But, I mean, they're playing at a high level right now. You've seen a lot more explosives coming from Cup than previous years. What is, is that just simply... Uh, Stafford's arm, or, or what would you say? Yeah, I mean, I think he's catching the ball um, in stride some. There's a lot of run after the catch with some of that stuff, too. Um, I mean, I think that's really what you see on film. He's catching the ball, and he's able to run with it after he's catching it. So, the, uh, the pass interference uh, penalties called against you guys, some of them haven't looked like there's a ton of contact, but I wonder, I mean, is it a matter of putting the, those guys in better positions? You yeah, know, I mean, so. I mean, you got to play the ball. Like that's ultimately what it comes down to. I mean, every every staff uh, in the league is telling their offensive receivers to go back for the ball and try to create contact, um, whether it's there or not. If you're not playing the ball, it's it's going to be tough. They're going to err on the side, of probably throwing it and giving it to the offense. Is there some kind of coaching point you can take away from that, especially after a game where it was? So yeah, cool? I mean, we got to we worked on it last week. Uh, we got to obviously continue to work on it. Um, but when you're in phase and you start to feel that guy start looking up and you try to locate the ball, you never we tell him we never want to start going back to the man. Once you see the ball and you're going to play the ball, once you turn back to the man after you're locating the ball to play it, that's when you're going to get lost and you're going to end up playing into him and the ref's going to ultimately see it as you're not playing the ball, right? So something you just got to continue to work. I mean, it's tough. You're running full speed, and all of a sudden they put the brakes on, and the ball's up there, and you're running with your head turned, be able to get your head around. And but most important, I think, of all of it is we got to be in a position where we can play the football. We talked about Bayard a number of times the last couple of weeks. How how challenging has it been for him to play with Hooker to McDougal to Crookshank to Hooker to Crookshank by his side again? I mean, has that been a challenge for him? Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, I think any time you can get some consistency with who you're playing with in terms of communication from the guy next to you to probably even more more importantly the guys in front of him, you know, I think that that becomes a big piece of it too. Um, but he's a pro. He knows he knows what we do defensively. He's locked into our scheme, the communication. He kind of runs it out there. Um, so I think he's been able to handle it. It's just it it requires a little bit more of him, you know, than whether it's just Hook or whether it's Dane or whether it's whoever. Right, like there's a little bit more required. He's got to know who he's playing with. I think that's the factor too, in regards to what all he has to take on with certain guys, depending on who else is out there with him. Um, and he's been able to do it. And I mean, he just continues to make big plays for us when we need him. He is, he is creating turnovers and, and doing a lot more than he did last year. What's he doing different, or what, what's he doing doing better? Yeah, I think um, we're rushing the quarterback a little bit better. I think that comes into play. Um, I think he's he's instinctive. He's always been instinctive, but he's instinctive. That play he made the other day coming out of the post to intercept the over, like it's an impressive play not many people can make, you know, and um, he saw it. He recognized it. He took his shot. He beat the guy to the spot. David did a good job extending the over and matching the over on play action to give KB a little bit more time. But those are the instinctive plays that he's made and we expect them to make. About that, that, he checked David into doing that. Correct. I mean, so essentially, there's some sort of a no. So we were we were in zone coverage, and the over routes always in the play action game. It always puts you in a little bit of a bind because that inside linebacker's got to be able to get some depth and hopefully get that thing extended. Um, and KB, we had a call. We had a call in where it kind of gave him a little bit of freedom to come out of the post, so to speak. So he he came out of the post and broke on it, right? But Without him doing that, it's technically David's play. How impressive is a uh, Harold streak of you know at least one sack in five straight games? Yeah, he, he shows up every day. I mean, he's the same guy every day. He prepares. He's always been a pro. Um, not surprised by it. I'm encouraged by it, uh, obviously. Um, but you see the same guy out there every single day. He's going to play hard. Um, I mean, the chasing wins down at the end of the first half there, knocking the ball out. Um, that's who he is, 
you know. So I think production comes when you play hard and you're relentless and you're improving your craft and working on your craft and studying the game. Uh, that production is a result of it. How is um, Jayon doing since being back at practice? I know he's still technically on IR, but it's it's been a up and down season for him, just having a lot of these injuries. But how are you seeing him? Yeah, I think uh, I mean he's always been one of the guys. He's been one of our leaders. He's been engaged throughout the ups and downs of this season um, with the LBs, with the unit. Um, it's good to see him back out here moving around. Um, we'll just kind of see as the week goes where he's at. Um, but that's one thing with him. He's he's always been kind of one of the guys. So I think he's stayed in that realm, even though he's been in the training room and some of that other stuff. He's been in meetings. Um, I think he's a valuable resource for those other inside linebackers, for Rashawn, for David, because um, he's played a lot of football for us. So, I'm excited that he's getting back out to work. We'll kind of see where the week goes and see what we can get out on Sunday, possibly. Do you have installation conversations or adjustment conversations regarding play action? Hey, this guy's not uh, an all-star back, or he's not. they're not running particularly well right now. You can be a little bit more more patient on seeing if it's if it's pass or... Uh, I, know what, I know what you're getting at. Um, yeah, I think uh, we kind of talked about a little bit the last week. Part of it is does their run look like their play action, right? I think that's a big piece of it, being able to recognize some of that um, from the back end. But I think a little bit of it goes into your game plan, you know, what you're trying to stop, how you're trying to stop things, um, what coverages you're playing become a piece of it, right? Um, but, yes, we, we always have those conversations. You kind of play, play in the run, play in the pat, play in the boot, right? Those are the three things you're really seeing out of some of that stuff. Um, and really where you're going to put your emphasis. Did, uh, did Avery just not prove to be a good fit, uh, you know, for the for the system? He came in and did some good things for us in practice. I mean, he was he was available if we needed him. Um, just didn't work out. We're kind of working our way back with some other guys right now. What do you, what do you tell, uh, I know Mike talked about it earlier in the week, but what do you tell a guy like Simmons who's trying to be aggressive and, and play the whistle? Uh, where he doesn't get a flag, but also can kind of, kind of have the same impact on plays. Yeah, man, it's hard. Um, I mean, Tough call, like he's run to the ball, whistle hasn't been blown. We, we preach, and you guys have heard it for three or four years now, we're gonna be full tilt to the tackle, right? And if the dude ain't tackled and the whistle ain't blown, we're still gonna keep playing, right? There's a fine line, I mean, you gotta be smart, but I mean, I thought it was a tough call um, in the situation, but again, we're, we're not gonna slow down and be hesitant and not finish, because you see offenses, when you're not finishing on these plays, the linemen are coming and finishing. They're pushing, pushing guys in to the end zone, right? Like, so it's a fine line between understanding what's going on, but ultimately, like, we got to play until we hear that whistle blown or until somebody's on the ground.